Today on What It's Like, really special treat, this was the most expensive American car that was made in the 50s by a major manufacturer. Because uh, the reason I say that is because I think the Cunningham was right up there with it. That was a pretty expensive car as well. We are going to cover everything about the 1958 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. Picture this. You just obtained a classic car you know nothing about. Perhaps it's a car where the information is spotty at best and just doesn't get the coverage that it deserves. Man, this is the channel for you. We feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get lost in the shuffle. If that sounds like a channel that you would totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Great news, the search is over. That is, if you're looking for one of these, this one is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, and could be yours if you're interested. Click the link below after watching the show to go check it out. So we can't talk about this car without mentioning the Continental Mark II, which is why this car was even made. For those that don't know, the Continental Mark II was the most expensive car on offer in America during the 50s before this car was made. And well, Cadillac being Cadillac just couldn't have that. Cadillac doesn't play second chair to anybody. This, just for reference, the Continental Mark II cost $10,000, which was equivalent to spending $109,562.50. The Continental Mark II came standard with every option that would be on a lesser Lincoln product or any other lesser car frankly, except for air conditioning. If you got air conditioning, which was the only option on the Continental Mark II, it put the price tag well over $10,000. Continental Mark II only lasted two years, 1956 and 1957. 1956, it was unopposed. Cadillac didn't release the Kraken. I mean, Eldorado Fleetwood Brome until 1957. Let's talk 1958 Cadillac model lineup, starting at the bottom, Series 62 followed by Series 62 Eldorado, followed by Series 60 Fleetwood. Series 75 was the ultra long wheelbase cars that were the limos and the hearses and what have you, but perched at the top overlooking all of the peasants was the Series 70 Eldorado Brome. Cadillac produced this exclusive Fleetwood Brome from 1957 to 1958. Designed by Ed Glowacki, the Cadillac Fleetwood Brome drew inspiration from two show cars, the 1953 Orleans, in the 1955 Park Avenue, just to put it in perspective of how exclusive this car was, it cost three times as much as a regular Cadillac. It was $3,000 more than the Continental Mark II, and it was more expensive than the 1957 Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud. The Cadillac Fleetwood Brome could only be had as a four-door hardtop and came standard with everything that was optional on lesser cars. What follows next are all of the features that came with this car. Maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. Low profile tires with thin sidewalls, automatic trunk opener, as well as closer, memory seats, which was an industry first, cruise control, polarized sun visors, signal seeking twin speaker radio, electric antenna, power electric door locks, dual heating system, silver magnetized glove box drink tumblers. Yes, you heard that right. This car came with a portable bar that was magnetized. Cigarette and tissue dispensers, lipstick and cologne, ladies compact with powder puff, mirror, and matching leather notebook, comb and mirror, Ultronic eye, power windows, and air conditioning. It's important to note that this car comes standard with power everything, windows, locks, steering, brakes, and air conditioning as standard. The only option that I think that you could get with this car was the air suspension. In the comment section below, if you know if that came standard or that was an option. The 1958 Cadillac Fleetwood Brome was essentially a carryover body design, but it did have some key differences. Most of them inside, but the 58 did get a new grill featuring multiple round cleats. The new grill was wider. The bumper guards were mounted lower. Tail fins are less pronounced and trim was revised. Let's talk specs. 216.3 inches long, 80 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 126 inches. It weighs 5,314 pounds. Price. Now, I hope you're sitting down for this one. $13,074, which doesn't sound like a lot now, but 
adjusted for inflation, that's like you spending $134,816.01 in the year 2023. Total, 1958 Cadillac production was 121,778. Series 70, so the Fleetwood Brome Series 70 was 304. Both 57 and 58. So 57, they made 400 units of the Fleetwood Brome with a grand total of 704 being produced between the years of 1957 and 1958. Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer, 365 cubic inch displacement, V8, 6 liters. It's good for 335 brake horsepower at 4,800 RPM, 405 foot-pound of torque at 3,400 RPM. Compression rate of 1025 to 1. This one has the tri-power carb setup. Hydromatic, four-speed automatic. Now, here's the real bummer. This car is so exclusive that I couldn't find any 0 to 60 numbers, but I did find 0 to 60 numbers for lesser Cadillacs with the same engine. So here's some roundabout numbers. 0 to 60, 11 seconds. With a theoretical top speed of 116 miles per hour, average fuel consumption is around 10.4 miles to the gallon. Let's talk styling. So just check this out. Look at how this all comes down and how it's all nice and chrome and or stainless. Also notice how this comes back around to the side here and the line continues to go down the side. This bumper and just below it there are running lights and or turn signals. These might be the turn signal indicators as well as running lights underneath. Just check out how big, how massive these are. They're huge. Have to have rubber tips on them. They, that would cause some serious damage. Notice the point right here. And it goes back and it gets taller. Like look at how pointy that is. These look like air ducts. These actually look like they're functional. I'm not entirely sure if they go for the air conditioning system or what these are for, but they're super cool. Just look at how all of this is designed. As just mentioned, see that line? It goes the whole way back. Notice how this part here, down here, sticks out. This is tucked more in than this is. And it wraps back around. And then this piece comes up to the front wheel well. Notice how this part covers the wheel kind of like a fender skirt, but it's not. It's an actual piece. We have to talk about this roof. This is stainless steel. So coming back to the tail section, this is where gas goes. So right there, that's the gas filler. It's interesting. Over here, look, a look how small these taillights are. They're, they're tiny. And it kind of sort of resembles like a 57 Chevy-ish in the taillight lens. There's the fin. Look back here. I never knew that these had spears as well in the back. The exhaust would be ported through here, but they rerouted it back here. There's backup lights, another light. But just check out that tail end design. It's not like a traditional fin. It just it starts almost it starts really late. Coming up and getting inside, this door is extremely heavy for what it is. Just check out all of the hinges. It's got three hinges. It's not a very big door. 
but it's extremely heavy. It's probably one of the heaviest doors I've ever opened. There is a lot going on. So check out how this is all designed. Notice this is all grooved out to fit inside the top itself. It's all chromed out as well. It's got a two-tone color scheme going on, white and black. Black and white, however you want to say it. I like this chrome piece to differentiate the colors. Also notice how that is. It's deep down here. The armrest isn't very wide. It's very cylinder. Armrest, door handle to pull the door shut. There's lots of stuff going on over here. Here's all the window switches. This is the door handle to get out. It works much like a Corvette. This is to adjust the mirror. Coming down inside the pedal box down here. High beam switch, emergency brake, and or parking brake, brake pedal, gas pedal, hood release is inside. Just take a look at this interior. That door is so heavy. The rest of the doors aren't heavy, just this one. This one's a lot of heft. Anyway, there's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. This car is absolutely huge and it feels so quality. Here's what under the steering wheel looks like. I wear size 34 pants, so if you're around my size, you'll fit in this very comfortably. If you're a little bit bigger, you'll fit as well. On to the button switches and knobs, starting at the base of the wraparound windshield, wipers and windshield washer feature, headlights, oil pressure, water temperature. Just below that are the heat and defroster settings. Speedometer, odometer with tripometer. Drive modes are park, reverse, drive, low, reverse, amp meter, gas gauge. Just below that, air conditioning controls, ignition, tone and speaker controls for the radio. Radio, clock. Notice the clock spins much like a Model A speedometer or an Edsel speedometer. Very interesting clock situation. Ashtray with lighter. Passenger ashtray with lighter. Up above, sun visors. Notice these sun visors are translucent. How cool is that? It's all chromed out. And they go the whole way. They go the whole length, so if I put this one down too, there's only like an inch or two inch gap. I like that, that's really cool. Daytime, nighttime mirror right there. This is what I look like behind the wheel. That's how much space I have. I'm six foot two, I fit in this car perfect. And the more I sit in it, it kind of sort of wraps around you, but it's definitely a big car. You feel like you're in a big, hunk of lead not a bad thing feels very quality everything is super nice on to the glove box test here's our test subject here's my hand for reference here is our glove box in question no problem at all fits clear back there but before we shut it there are some things back here look it says open and close so it must have a fully powered trunk where you can open it and close it that's really cool so it does shut so it does fit so i don't usually talk about the passenger side door panel but i figured i would this door isn't nearly as heavy as that door that door is extremely heavy but just check out all of these hinges operate the big massive hinges door handle to get out. Notice back here it's wider than it is up here. It's almost like the armrest is pushed out more towards the back. And this acts as the door handle to pull the door shut. The armrest is very slender. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is for the vent window. The vent window is powered. Which 
just check this out. So look at this. When I open this door, look at how that opens. This post stays here and this is what gets the doors. I've never seen anything like this before on any other car that has coach doors. Very interesting. Also check out all of the chrome trim that they put on these seats. Check out cell plates. So let's talk about the rear door panel. Just check out how the rear window is designed. It's all framed out. Ashtray, cigarette lighter. This is to get out. Window button. Lock and unlock the doors. Armrest. It's a nice quality sounding shutting door. It sounds like a bank fault when you shut it, really. So take a gander up there. That is what the back to front view looks like. And just take a look around at the greenhouse. There's lots of stuff going on with this interior. Check out the light situation. There's a light right there. Coat hook there. Look at how this top is designed. This line right here looks very reminiscent of like an early Chevy Bel Air top. Coming around to the back. This is what the rear view looks like. I absolutely love the wraparound windshield. And all of the bright work. Chrome or stainless steel around coming back around this side everything that's over on the driver's side is also on the passenger side with lights coat hook this car has a center armrest but not just a center armrest it's a center rear console and it's got all kinds of stuff in it tissues You can conceal it right back there like that. Just check out everything that's going on. Look at that generator. Look how huge it is. It's got a compressor on top of it. Yeah, that's crazy. That's the generator, it's just huge. Power steering pump, air compressor is over there. Now it's time for the pros and cons. We are getting all of these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars. Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the auto editors of Consumer Guide. On the positive side, one-of-a-kind concept, advanced engineering, the ultimate in luxury, fine road manners with or without air suspension, a milestone car, against it, very expensive on today's market, many body parts and component parts, like those silver tumblers, now impossible to find, high running costs. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give me both the correct name of the band as well as song title, both correctly, first person to do so will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. Or check out our Facebook group. It correlates with this YouTube channel. If you're interested in it, the link will be in the description. So if I catch you on here or on Facebook, just know that I appreciate all of the support. And until next time... Toodaloo!